Listen Up with Jim Potts. Listen Up, business owners, CFOs, human resource managers, and all managers and supervisors. Jim Potts is answering and addressing your questions and concerns, helping you stay out of court. Furthermore, please be advised that Jim's answers are not legal advice and are only intended as a guide based on his years of experience. The phone lines are open, 1-855-4-J-POTS. That's 1-855-457-6887. You can also email us at listenup at jameswilliampottsllc.com. Ready to listen up? Here is Jim Potts. Hey, Jim Potts back on the Well, hey, look, last week was Easter, and I hope everybody had a good time and, you know, did some Easter egg hunts and you know, didn't eat, eat, you know, too much chocolate bunnies and all that kind of good stuff, and and uh, hopefully everybody had a very festive uh, weekend. Well, look, the last time I talked to you, I told you that uh, there was going to be a part two last time. We talked about understanding the role of a supervisor, and I just covered a few points in there. Um you know, one was that, you know, the responsibility that a supervisor has a responsibility for everybody on their team was number one. Number two was communicating effectively. So I'm just trying to remind everybody, and in case you picked it up this week and didn't hear the one last week, you need to go back and listen to the one last week. So number two was communicating effectively. Number three was preventing and resolving conflict. All right. And number four was managing employees' performance goals. Now is what we're going to talk about. Uh, we're going to move on, and we're going to talk about understanding employment law. Now, this part may seem a little bit heavy to you, but you know you got to understand that as a supervisor, it really isn't coming upon you to understand some of these things. You don't have to know them in the detail that I know them, of course. But supervisors and managers have a shared responsibility with human resources. It's a shared responsibility with HR and making sure that their interactions and relations with employees are compliant. Now, that's a tough part of your job. Whether you like it or not, you've got to learn at least some of the basics on a federal and state guideline. Now, since most people are unaware of everything they need to do to stay compliant, it's very important to receive ongoing train, training on employment law as well as receiving continuing coaching and development. Look, I don't expect you to become experts. Um, I, yeah, I get that. But you've got to generally understand some of these different areas. And by law... Your employer is supposed to put, and this goes out to the employees also, uh, posters on the bulletin boards that actually have some of those laws on there, which makes it a little bit easier for you. All right, so just go to those posters. At least have that, that information. But some of the major employment law issues that supervisors should be aware of, I'm going to give you a few of these so you can write these down and uh, go to your poster and make sure that the poster is up there. The Fair Labor Standards Act, we call that the FLSA, Fair Labor Standards Act. That's federal. The Family Medical Leave Act, we call it the FMLA. Occupational Safety and Health Act, you know that is OSHA, O-S-H-A. The Equal Pay Act, all right, that one speaks for itself. The Americans with Disabilities Act, or well, the ADA is the, is the way you commonly know that one. The most important, in my opinion, is Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. That one is the one that has a whole list of protected categories. And you at least need to be familiar with that list. Now, for those of you that are in California, April 1st, you must take another look at your, at your policies because recently the California Department of Fair Employment and Housing has now put out a new standard of guidelines that the employer must follow Okay, April 1st. So if you do not uh, have a new stated policy, for those of you out there uh, that need to reach me, reach me on it. I've written that policy so that the policy is clearly stated as well. All right. And it's, it's the one that you will need to put in your handbook and also make um, as a part of your um, orientation package. So get in touch with me and I will be glad to send you a, uh, a sample uh, policy. Okay, that was number five. Number six, problem solving and making decisions confidently. Listen, you got to understand, as a supervisor, your staff is coming to you. They expect you to be able to help make decisions. And they expect you to be the type of person that can make a decision. At its essence, problem solving is about identifying the problem first. So you've got to make sure the problem is identified. Once you identify the problem, Analyzing data to determine the root cause, cause 
identifying and implementing a solution and then monitoring the process to ensure the solution remains implemented and that it does not cause more problems. That's your job, all right? And as a supervisor, if you can't resolve that issue or that problem, go to your supervisor and work with them to help you with it. Now, a problem is the difference between the current situation and the standard or goal, all right? Without the identification of this desired state, there's really no way to identify if a problem exists. So you gotta be able to solve a problem. And in order to be able to solve the problem, Here's what you need, all right? Get your pens out again if you're not already writing. And I know some of you are jogging and all that kind of good stuff. Um, I know a client told me the other day that she listens it listens to it while she's driving to work. And you know who you are, so you're listening to this. Hello back to you. Um, and you can always, because of the fact this, you can always go back and listen to it later and write these little pearls of wisdoms down. So, one, creative thinking skills and attitudes to generate new ideas to adapt to a changing environment. Two, critical thinking, which is more on the analytical side. Um, so creative thinking skills and attitudes to ascertain whether or not um, others view the ideas as good. And then number three under that category is practical thinking. And that's where the innovation comes in. So practical thinking skills and attitudes to implement the ideas and persuade others of their value. And that's the key right there, persuading others of their values. Because let me tell you about employees, if you haven't, heard, haven't already learned this lesson. And especially if you're a new supervisor, think back when you were a regular employee and every time your supervisor went to you with a new idea and you rejected it. So that's what's critical, is being able to get employees on the bandwagon with you, even though that employee may not like that new uh, policy. Now look, you as a supervisor, you may get a hand-me-down from your supervisor that says, hey, this is the new policy. You gotta understand that even though you may not like the policy, your job is to sell it to the troops, basically. So the way you come across to them is critical. If you come across negatively, what's the employee, how are they gonna view it negatively as well? And now you're in a situation where you're not part of the regular rank and file anymore. So you've got to be able to sell unpopular policies to your troops. And when you learn how to do that, believe me, you're going to end up being a successful uh, supervisor. But don't be phony about it. But also don't get caught up with it. Because if the employee turns around and says, well, what do you think? What's your opinion? And you really hate the policy. Well, look, I get it. All right. But you've got to sell it from the standpoint that, look, I'll tell you what. The policy, I, I'm not a policy maker. So because I'm not a policy maker, my job is to present the policies, explain the, the benefits of the policy, and that's what I wanna do. I wanna wrap around it and give it a chance. And that's all that I'm asking you to do. That's how you frame the response back if they get asked, what do you think about that new policy? Because you'll be in a catch-22. Whatever you do, don't look at them and tell them, nah, I don't like the policy either. Don't do that. All right, don't do that. Let's take a look at number seven, leading and working with teams. Teams are comprised of several individuals with different social styles, personalities, reward and recognition preferences, work prioritizations styles, okay? Coaching style preferences, preferences for receiving feedback. Supervisors have the responsibility of juggling all of these differences while also forming a cohesive, cooperative team. Once again, these are skills that are acquired skills. You're gonna learn some of this through experience, all right? You can take it around and take notes that I'm talking about now and everything, but when you start implementing these, it's not gonna be as easy as it sounds. And you know, again, I'm directing this to new supervisors, but for some of you veteran supervisors that are out there, you know, these are good points for you to think about also. Because when people of differing work styles work together, issues can and will arise. If you're not prepared as a supervisor, those issues will seem like obstacles instead of opportunities. So you've got to be all over it. All right. Without a strong supervisory presence and without a central figure who can help navigate these through these differences, relationships can break down, team spirit can erode, and the culture of high performance becomes one of low morale and mistrust. That's why this one is so critical for you. You've got to be a leader. Eight, leading and managing change. Leading and managing change. Change is inevitable. 
It's how change it's how change is led and managed that makes the difference. Companies that accept and embrace change are typically healthier, more dynamic, and faster growing than those who fear change. And your job is to make sure how you manage that change by your leadership. Now, when faced with change, people could typically put a negative spin on it, often without even knowing all the facts. So that's where you're going to have to step in and recognize that. And a person's natural tendency is to see change as a threat. People don't like change. And that's how our brains are, brains are hardwired, they say, to be risk adverse, all right, rather than seeing the positives. Now, there's three simple commands I want you to keep in, 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 you know, keep in mind that supervisors can use when dealing with a perceived negative like change. Number one, stop. When change first occur, uh, occurs, it's important to not automatically turn it into a negative response. Instead, as a supervisor, stop and refrain from acting and deciding anything. It is also important to mentally disconnect and try to observe, observe the change that is happening. Number two, challenge. Once a, once a moment was taken to process what had happened instead of reacting to it. The next step as a supervisor is to take on the challenge of finding the positives in the situation. Point out the positives to your staff. And then choose. Once the silver lining has been identified with the challenge, the next step as a supervisor is to come up with an ideal response. Once the ideal response has been uncovered, it is imperative that you use it. Number nine, planning and managing the work. You've got to do that. And that speaks for itself. As a supervisor, it's no longer about managing personal time. Within a supervisory role, it's important to help employees manage their time, their priorities, and their project. You've got to help them with that. Help them establish those priorities as you see them. That's what's important because they're not... They're not mind readers. You've got to be able to present it to them. And number 10, this last one, understanding and respecting generational differences. And if you think I'm going to spend the time trying to go through that, you know, a line a minefield right at the moment, not going to happen. With traditionalists, baby boomers, general, Generation X, and millennials all coexisting in the same office, there's bound to be generational differences. These differences are now forcing companies to put practices into place to help manage the generational issues and conflict. And that is a topic for another day. So you'll have to come back sometime in the future and look out for that one. I'm still doing research on that one. But as you can see, that one is going to be, I'm probably going to use two shows for that one. All right, with that last comment, it's time to close out this segment. But let me remind you that you can also hear us on Facebook at Listen Up. Um, and subscribe to us on, on iTunes. Just search for Listen Up with Jim Potts. And as a reminder, we do take calls. Um, we can, you know, every third Friday uh, between 9:45 and 11, 855-4J Potts, or you can call us at 855-457-6887. Or, as so many people do, you can you can email us at Listen Up at uh, jameswilliampottsllc.com. Okay, I'm Jim Potts. I will continue to fight the fight. Thanks for listening, and I will catch you next time. Thank you for being a part of Listen Up with Jim Potts. We take your calls every third Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time for your questions and concerns. Call us at 1-855-4-J-POTS. That's 1-855-4-J-POTS. Again, that's every third Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time at 1-855-4-J-POTS. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on iTunes, and link up with us on LinkedIn. You can also email us at listenup at jameswilliampottsllc.com. Until next time, make it a great week.